One of the more recent community groups to have been organized is the Adolescent Girls Program. It owes its existence to the persistence and strength of the Mahila Mandals and village health workers. As these women have become empowered, they too want to create the same courage, self-esteem, and valuable health knowledge in their daughters. As generations choose to change old oppressive beliefs and practices to more healthy ones, village culture changes in a permanent way. Village health workers, Mahila Mando members, and social workers from CRHP help recruit adolescent girls from the villages to spend a week at CRHP during their summer or winter school holidays. Groups average about 25 girls, and so far over 54 villages are currently participating. I came to this camp when I was a teenager. At that time, my parents were pressuring me to get married, but here I learned that a girl isn't developed fully as a teenager and that it's dangerous for me and my child to be pregnant so early in life. So after the program, I fought against my parents' wishes and refused to be married until I reached the legal age of 18, and they reluctantly agreed. After I eventually became married and pregnant as an adult, I remembered what I had learned here about nutrition, and my baby was born a healthy three kilos. Also, because I came from a nomad community, and my family was very poor, my parents never sent me to school. But at the camp here, I began to learn to read and write, and now I'm teaching my four-year-old to do the same. During this week of intensive training, these girls become aware of and begin to address the extreme gender inequality and low status of women in Indian society. Daily seminars focus on what constitutes healthy nutrition, both for themselves and their families, where to find good ingredients, and how to prepare them into tasty meals. They learn in detail about the female anatomy, healthy personal hygiene, the process of menstruation, how to create simple and cheap sanitary napkins, and about safe family planning methods. In many villages, people believe that menstruation is bad blood, and villagers will refuse to be in contact with anyone menstruating for fear of sickness. Here, girls dispel this myth as they learn the truth about their body cycles. Girls learn their social and legal rights, the adverse effects of early marriage, and the devastating consequences of the practice of giving large dowries. Before I came here, my neighbors would continually pressure my parents that I should not go to school and get married instead. But after learning so much and gaining confidence at this program, I insisted that I receive my education first before getting married. At first, my parents didn't support this decision, but with the help of some of the social workers here, they eventually allowed me to stay in school. Now I'm finishing the 12th grade and planning on pursuing my Bachelor's of Arts at university next year. Participants create dramatic plays to teach their friends and villagers about what they have learned. To prevent harassment and attacks, girls learn pragmatic self-defense moves. Useful income generation activities, ranging from creating decorative home accessories, to tailoring, to caring for animals, are taught to give girls the means and power to care for themselves if needed. In one aspect of the program, the girls are brought to the CRHP training farm to learn cheap and modern agricultural practices, animal husbandry, and how to supplement their nutrition with organic household gardens. After finishing the training and returning to their villages, these girls are continuously monitored by their village health workers and CRHP staff, who visit their villages weekly to check on their nutrition, health, and happiness. Now in my village, I am focusing on nutrition, economic progress, education, health, and personal development of adolescent girls, working to instill confidence in them so that they become bold. Because they are going to become future mothers, they will need all of this. Physical health isn't the only thing that is important. 
mental health, spiritual well-being, and a stable financial situation all contribute to a woman's total health. As these girls began to see the injustice and adverse effects of their low status, such as lack of education, poor nutrition, and lack of social mobility, they are given hope that there is another way, and they learn valuable tools to create the type of life they have always wanted to live.